Good morning. Welcome to worship. We give thanks to God for this Sunday and gathering us here in person. And this is also the service that we we live stream on Facebook, Zoom, and then later put on YouTube. So it is our multimedia service as well. Um, next week, we give thanks to God. We have a, a pianist with us for next week. So every other week, we have kind of it figured out. So we are still looking for pianists for those every other weeks. So if you know anybody who plays piano, um, send them the way of the office to me, to Judy, and we will follow up on those, those leads as well so we can get some live music here as well. But um, your graciousness in our figuring this out with the pandemic and, and finding a good fit for us is, is important and also your prayers as well. We, we've transitioned once again to giving you all the announcements in so you can take them home. And there are, as always, Marion's been doing a really good job of getting it all up on our website. So if you haven't checked out our website recently, please do, because you'll have, if you haven't watched a service or a devotional or my Lord's Prayer class, that's there as well. And then our calendar section under news and events has all of the things that are coming up, a nice little picture and a description. Um, but in here, some highlights for today are that between services, it's the second Sunday of the Lord's Prayer class. And so if you didn't go last week, don't worry, you'll be able to follow along still. They are also posted later on YouTube after that. And then I also wanted to highlight our women's retreat is coming up on Saturday, October 16th. We're staying here in Bonnie Lake. It's just a one day retreat. And um, I'll be leading that on um, Brene Brown's Gifts of Imperfection. So how to the courage connection and um, for us in this time of challenging times. Um, there's other things that are coming up. And I, I want us also want to thank our, our property team for and all those who came yesterday to help around the, the grounds. It looks lovely outside. So thank you for all your hard work in the grounds out here. It's always appreciated how you contribute to our congregation. Any other announcements that I'm missing? Okay, so the fellowship meeting. Okay. Okay, so Thursday, seven o'clock here. So there's a fellowship meeting for those of you who can't hear. Um, fellowship meeting tonight, um, Thursday at seven o'clock here. If you want to help plan some of the fellowship events coming up, I know there's a categories coming up and a bunco night as well. So come in, there's some of that getting back together in the, in um, enjoying each other's presence is also important. Okay, thank you, Kim. Let us prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. Please rise. We worship in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. One God whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our comforter, like lost sheep, we have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. All have, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. By the gift of grace in Christ Jesus, I declare that your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God makes you righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all your sins. Amen.
feast and celebration, all of creation sings for joy. To the God of life and love and freedom, praise and glory forevermore. Now is the feast of the Lamb once slain, whose blood has freed and united us to be one great people of God. Let us pray. Sovereign God, you have created us to live in loving community with one another. Form us for life that is faithful and steadfast, and teach us to trust like little children, that we may reflect the image of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. first reading is from Genesis, the second chapter. The Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper as his partner. So out of the ground, the Lord God formed every animal of the field, every bird of the air, and brought them to the man to see what he could call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all the cattle, to the birds of the air, to every animal of the field. But for the man, there was not found a helper as his partner. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs and closed its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, this at last is the bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman. For out of man, this one has, was taken. Therefore, man leaves his father and his mother and clings to his wife in the become one flesh. The word of the Lord. Okay. The second reading is from the book of Hebrews, the first and second chapters. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir to all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being, and he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. Now, God did not subject the coming world about which we are speaking to angels, but someone has testified somewhere. What are human beings that you are mindful of them or mortals that you care for them? You have made them for a little while lower than angels. You have crowned them with glory and honor, subjecting all things under their feet. 
Now in subjecting all things to them, God left nothing outside their control. As it is, we do not yet see everything in sub uh, subjugation to them, but we do see Jesus, who for a while, while he was made lower than the angels, now crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. It is fitting that God for whom and through all, whom all things exist in bringing many children to glory should make the pioneer of our, their salvation perfect through sufferings. For the one who sac sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one father. For this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters in the midst of the congregation. I will praise you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Got my children's sermon helper. Come on over here. Through all the kids that are watching later on from home, right? Well, at second service today, we have a baptism. And last Sunday, we had a baptism at this service when Brody was baptized. And this is a place where God makes promises to us. Can you, what is a promise, do you think? What would you say a promise is? Something that somebody swears that they, they will for sure do or that they for sure they won't do. Yep. And when, can we always trust people's promises? Not all the time, can we? Sometimes people break promises, right? See, he's already at 10, the skeptic, right? Well, guess what? When God makes a promise, God always keeps a promise. He never breaks his promise, right? And that's one thing that we learn a day in our text that we need to have faith like children, like even littler than you, when they just hear something and, they, and their parents tell them and they believe it is true. So when we, are in, when we get baptized, God says that we are God's children forever and always, and that God will never, ever let us go. And that's a promise that we can trust. That's a promise that will always be there for us. And that's why it was so exciting that Brody was baptized last week and that we'll have a baptism at second service too today. So I want you to remember when you're frustrated that some people don't keep their promises, that God not only promises to be with you, but promises to forgive you when you break your promises and other people when they break their promises too. Should we pray together? Dear Jesus, thank you for keeping your promises. And thank you for forgiving me and other people when we break our promises too. And all God's children said, Amen. Thank you, Joaquin. Please rise for our gospel acclamation. Today's gospel reading comes from Mark, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Some Pharisees came, and to test Jesus, they asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, Because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter. And he said to them, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. 
And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly, I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God, our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, among the texts to be avoided, this is kind of one of them. It's often, but they're often the ones that we need to hear. How God's grace comes into moments that are real and that are difficult and that have invited and, and created brokenness into our lives discord into our life. So what is God's word for that for us today and all the days of our life? This particular text is also one of the reasons why Jesus was crucified. And it's also why John, literally, why John the Baptist was beheaded. Because it's serious stuff. It hits home. And we don't like it when things hit home. I'm serious about the fact that this test the Pharisees present to Jesus was in fact how John lost his head. Because Herod and Herodias, his brother's Philip's wife, had gotten married. And John the Baptist had said it wasn't lawful. And Herodias nursed a grudge so long that she finally was able to trick Herod to give her anything she wanted. And what she wanted was John the Baptist's head. She didn't like that conviction. She didn't like being judged. And so she got a head on a platter. Jesus does not answer the Pharisees today. He sends it back to them with, with a question. What did Moses say? Not what did Jesus say, but what did Moses say about this? What does the law say? Because the law is there to preserve life and to stop us and to also drive us to, to Christ. Moses allowed a concession of the law of state the Pharisees to allow divorce to take place. And Jesus takes on these concessions that, the, that Moses has added to the law, these loopholes. And he says, well, it's because you have hardened hearts. And instead of giving us concessions and loopholes, Jesus leaves us in the full force and the impact of the law, where there is no escape from the judgment. No one can separate what has been joined, Jesus says. You cannot be justified in a concession or in a loophole. Escape clauses do not exist. Okay, let's take a deep breath here and dig into the discomfort a little bit that this creates. Remember, once again, I'm laying this on pretty thick, but John the Baptist was beheaded because of this exact thing. And Jesus was crucified because of this challenge. And it's just as challenging today. Maybe not divorce, but these texts today take up creation and marriage and gender. They only miss masking, I think, and mandates. Everything else, pretty much the hot button topics of our time are kind of in this text. All the things that we disagree about and we want to have concessions, we want to have our way, we want to make everybody happy and we all disagree on what that looks like. Because usually with the law and limits, what happens is from Garden of Eden on, God says something and we don't like it. It's like adolescentness comes to us in full force. Mom and dad say, and we don't like it. Our teachers say, and we don't like it. The government says, and we don't like it. You see the theme here. We are given limits and we do not like them. Moses gave a concession for divorce to maintain order in the time. We always look for concessions for justification to our actions. Did mom and dad really say that I can't have a party this weekend? We twist and turn in order to go forward as we want to go forward. Did our teacher really say that we couldn't 
like what's happening right now, go into the bathrooms and destroy the bathrooms. I mean, that was never told to us. TikTok said it was a great idea. We find a way to squeak through and bend the rules or completely break them and try to get away with it, right? I was influenced by somebody else. Or when the government, did the government really say that they, or do they really have the authority? But my case is unique and I have a reasonable explanation for what I'm doing and such forth and so forth. Jesus knows that this is what we do with God's word, with limits. And that is why we search for all those loopholes ways to get around the rules, to bend but not break them, follow the letter but not the spirit of the law. We've all done this before. We do not like it when our conscience is burdened. That feeling of being found out, of not measuring up, of being a fake, of not having worth. I don't know if I mentioned it recently, but I always, on Sundays, because I don't like to cook after church, being here, all the, I go to Costco and get something in my collar. And I have to behave even more than normal. I mean, if somebody makes me frustrated, I have to like be calm and collected and not, not do, I mean, not that I'm a disgruntled shopper normally, but you know what I mean? Just that understanding of what do I represent that's more than me. The law kind of confines me and I want to measure up to what pastors are supposed to be, even though I know I fall short because I'm human, just like all of you. We want to get it right, don't we? And we want to be in the right in what we do. So we justify, I'm not hurting anybody by what I'm doing. I can control myself. I can put limits on myself. I won't drink another drink. I won't go to that party anymore. I won't do this. I won't do that. We try to control ourselves. I know what is good for me. You don't need to tell me what's good for me. God included. Who are you to tell me what my limit or what is good and fair and right for me? We live in this space, don't we? All the time. And it tears us apart and our relationships apart. And when we look for concessions and loopholes, could it be that they, that they put your good as more valuable than somebody else's? If and when my good is not good for you, who wins in this game of chicken with the law? Do we both win? Do we both lose? So Moses made this concession, but Jesus didn't. And he closed the loophole and allowed the law to work. He does not give a better or a new law that day. He says, talk to Moses about law. I'm not here to bring new laws. This is not how things are intended to be, Jesus says. And I want you to feel that. I want you to struggle with that. And when we encounter something or someone that is unmovable like Jesus, firm and causes us to stumble or feel guilty, we don't want to hear it. We don't. We want to get rid of it. We want to shut it out, silence it. So Jesus gives us what the law cannot give by being crucified for our sake, for our burdened consciences that constantly seek loopholes and concessions. We want to hear all that God, that all is good and right and okay. And we're not getting that because Jesus does not give that to us. With the example today of divorce in our text, it's a sin. No one gets married hoping to have a divorce. Nobody. Something has broken to get to that point. Dreams and hopes are shattered in a divorce. It is not what God intended. It's sad. And it is a death of life as it had been lived. And naming that brokenness is important. And it's hard and it's painful even if it's the best option to preserve life at the moment. And there are really good reasons to get a divorce, but they are brokenness and pain. And in church, we can name that. It's not good. So, if it, is for, so it is for all of our intersections of our good desires and the impact on others. If it's not divorce, it's some other impact in our life some other decision and how your decisions are impacting other people. 
And we always search for those loopholes to justify ourselves. With divorce, it would be not be better to hear, it's okay, all good, let's celebrate from God, even though I know that at times, finally reaching to that point is a relief and a, a release. Sin, yes, not what God intended for us, but God does not leave us there, and that's important. God names it, and God makes us uncomfortable and struggles with it, but then doesn't leave us there. Backed into a miserable, inescapable corner because Jesus sealed all the escape hatches. No, what happens is that in dying for us, Christ frees us, not through the law, taking away its bite, but through the gospel, not making us a better law or better at the law, but creating us new in him. And instead of putting on our adolescent and adult levels of cynicism and skepticism, God makes us children once again in those waters that we never get beyond. Children who believe what we hear at face value. We sin and God tells us, you are forgiven. I am creating you anew. I know you're broken. I know you're hurting. I know you've done things that have harmed yourself and others. And I take that upon myself, Christ says, and I give you my mercy and my forgiveness and my grace. A story and a narrative of your life did not go as hoped and planned, but I am here to pick you up and create you anew in my mercy and grace, giving you a blessing like those children, a blessing which is a good word from God. And that word is, God is yours and you are God's. No matter what you do, no matter what you do, God knows and God forgives and God loves you. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Let us confess our faith together using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Made children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Dear God, you have established a diverse and beautiful creation. Revive declining species and preserve endangered lands. Cultivate in us a sense of wonder for the world you created. Lord, in your mercy. You desire for us not to be alone and to live in community with one another. Strengthen relationships between nations and peoples that we celebrate and support one, and one another in our human family. Lord, in your mercy. You share in our experiences and struggles. Bless all who live with any mental or physical disability. Inspire creative com communities, spaces, and environments that are accessible and hospitable. Lord, in your mercy. You have established and nurtured relationships that extend beyond those gathered here. Bless members who can no longer travel to worship with us or who are worshiping at home because of our pandemic and remind us of their continued role in this community of faith. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we ask you to be with healthcare workers who are exhausted, for teachers that have had to pivot so often in this school year and administrators in buildings as well. For all of us who are impacted by this pandemic in ways that maybe we aren't even aware of anymore, we ask for your mercy and your peace and uh, be with us in our weariness. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we ask you to be with those in our community in need of your care this day. We ask you to be with Nancy and Jay, for Fred and Tatiana, for Aldena and Pat, for Susan and Carol, for Diane and Don, for Terry, for Betty, for James, for Mary, for Jack and Sandy, for Vicki and Kim, for Jim and Ron, for Stephanie, and for Paula. We ask you to be with all of them in their time of need and their families as they surround them. Lord, in your mercy. And we celebrate today, Lord, as a community, the birth of a daughter to Stephanie and Alex. Lord, in your mercy. You promise eternal life to all your children. Thank you for the people of faith who have gone before us. Strengthen us in the trust we have in you and receive our prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share that peace as you are comfortable with one another. I want to remind you about our offering at the back there as you come and go, and also through our website. And the Give Plus app is doing a switch right now to a Vanco app. So we'll be seeing some of that in the newsletter and announcements coming up. It's still valid for a while now until the end of the year, but just there'll be a shifting in that way in a little bit. And we have a, a ministry minute today from our altar guild. So Linda and I took some time to record a conversation, early, I think last week. Linda Reed, who helps with some of our worship, especially in the areas of our altar guild. So I'd like to just hear a little bit from Linda about why you enjoy serving in this way. 
I enjoy altar guilt because it connects me with the sacrament. Uh, being able to prepare the bread and the wine and put it on the altar really helps me focus. And it also gives me a sense of being a servant when I'm doing those activities. In addition to that, at the end of service, when we clean up after uh, the 8.30 service and then get ready for the 11 o'clock service, we also have that feeling of passing it on and getting it ready for the service that we won't even see. And also uh, kind of a, a personal thing for me is the connection that I have with the other servers. It makes me think of doing dishes with my mom when I was a girl growing up and the conversations that we had. So it's a very rich experience for me on many levels. If somebody wanted to start helping with all that guilt, is, is there a training or what could they do that? Certainly there is a training. We have a, a list of guidelines that you can read at your leisure. Uh, even if you are wondering, well, what are all the things that you do? Well, it's several pages long, as you can imagine, because there's a lot of little moving parts with it. But um, you contact me and we'll set up a time that's convenient for you when the church is open. And we can come and run you through the procedures that we go through every Sunday, or you can come and just shadow uh, me or anyone else who is doing the setup and the cleanup for altar guild. And some people can only come and do the cleanup and that's fine. And other people can uh, bake bread and that's another wonderful service and the recipe is absolutely delicious as you know from taking communion. So uh, there's a, a number of ways to serve and through altar guilt and uh, we're welcoming new members at any time. Well, I'm so thankful that we're back to having communion up near the altar with real bread and not those little cups. I yes. know we still have that option available for those who are in their seats and prefer that right now, but I'm so thankful to re, um, reinvigorate this important ministry where we get uh, forgiveness of sins for us. To be able to make that individual contact and say the, the blood of Christ shed for you and the body of Christ broken for you, that personal contact is just so important to me and I hope it's important to other members as well. Well, I hope some, some of you who are listening to this would be excited to learn a little bit more about Altar Guild or other ways to serve and worship as well. It's an important ministry of our church and the passion that Linda brings and the other people who serve in this way add so much to our worshiping community. So please consider and God bless. Okay. So we do have our our um, time and talent sheets that are out on the table there. So if you haven't filled one out yet this fall, I really would like you to do that. So we can kind of fill out our teams again and our volunteers. I know we're, we have had a lot of things that just haven't been happening as often and now we are. So we really need you to prayerfully consider ways to step up and to be a reader, help with communion, help serve on one of our ministry teams. There's a lot of exciting new life happening right now. So you're invited to that. Please rise as we pray together our offering prayer. Let us pray. God of abundance, we have caused streams to break forth in the desert and manna to rain from the heavens. Accept the gifts you have first given us. Unite them with the offering of our lives to nourish The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed our duty and our joy that we should at all times and all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, our Lord on the cross who gave his life so that we might be a community together, the body of Christ in this world. And so we praise your name and join their unending hymn, speaking together. Holy, holy, holy are you, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in your name. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest.
In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to the disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it to all to drink saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. The ushers will invite you forward to the two stations up in front. All who hunger and thirst come, the table is ready. Day by day, and with each passing moment, strength I find to meet my trials here, trusting in my Father's wise bestowment. I've no cause for worry or for fear. He whose heart is kind me on a to each day what he deems best, lovingly it's part of pain and pleasure, mingling toil with peace and rest. Every day the Lord himself is near me, with a special mercy for each hour. All my cares he pain would bear and cheer me. He whose name is Counselor and Power, the protection of his child and treasure is a charge that on himself he laid. As my days, my strength shall be in measure. This cup lets to me remain. Help me then in every tribulation. So to trust thy promises, O Lord, that I lose not faith's sweet consolation offered me within thy holy word. Help me, Lord, when toil and trouble meet me, ere to take from a father's hand. One by one, the days, the moments fleeting, till I reach the promised land. In the gift of your body and blood, 
you turn the crumbs of our faith into a feast of salvation. Send us forth in the word thoughts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Receive the blessing of our Lord this day. People of God, you are Christ's body, bringing new life to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Our sending song is Go My Children with My Blessing. the living word dwells in you.